magical press the button, it switches on and it starts going all in one go. Let's hope I can keep it running. Yeah! Welcome to the Real Love Guitars Workshop. And um, today I've got a bit of a gap in customer things, which is nice for, for a change. Um, there's a few on their way through the international postage system. But anyway, while I'm at it, I wanted to pay tribute to what I'm calling Graham's Brown Special in, in honour of uh, Brian May's Red Special. This is the late Graham's, <clears throat> probably one of his best concoctions. It's a Stratocaster with a humbucker in the bridge position and it's got some really cute switching configurations that he's put in down here and a master volume, master tone. And I liked this guitar. It's a plywood, heavy plywood body. He's got a, I don't even know what, quite what this is, but he's, he's got the, um, okay, he's need poking through or something. He's got the, um, what would have been a tremolo system, an old, it's, in fact, it's a vintage locking configuration, but he's got it, <clears throat> locked down and blocked out with a which looks like a, a part of a coil from something uh, I, ooh, I suppose I could pull it out well, I'm, I'll, I'll dig it out in a minute but anyway it's, it's its function is to help lock down the, the uh, tremolo so really it's just a it's a it's a hard tail with this kind of quite elaborate piece of equipment here to make it hard tail there are probably simpler ways of doing it but I, what I really like about what he's done with this guitar is that the, the pickups are, you know, visibly not in the place where you'd expect them on a guitar like this. It's just slightly closer to the neck. He's also cut the pickguard into two pieces, and then he's sort of t tastefully painted the edges of this one like a, it looks a bit Burns Bison-ish. And then on, on on the end of that, he's put a very nice ninja, and I've forgotten even what the brand was but it's a ninja neck with a skunk stripe but it's actually quite a nice old vintage neck and I played this one, one a, a couple of months ago when I first got it <clears throat> and it took me about half an hour to work out these switches and basically it, it, it gives you pretty much any com well not any combination a an interesting set of combinations of um, this one of the switches splits the coil and then there's a kind of pretty much a, a pretty flexible combination of things but it's it takes a little getting your head round, but actually it's one of those things, like the um, the Brian May, it, it rewards time spent working out. It's got some nice tuners on it, the neck um, is tired uh, and the frets are fairly flat, so I think just as a, a fun thing along the way I'm going to refret this because is it an economic, does it make economic sense? No. Um, but that's not the point on this one, I'm gonna take, I'll take the time spent refretting this one as a, as a you know, a loss, I don't mind. What I want to do with this is, is put it out into the world as probably the only, is that right? Yeah, the only Graham guitar to live on after his death. I mean, I've got a couple in the house, actually, which I play a bit, and but they're not ones that I would sell. And this is, I'm gonna, I wanna make this, um, a really nice player so that it, it would be something that uh, I can sell and somebody else will, will own this, know a bit about its history and carry on using it into the future, hopefully. So it's quite, quite snug in this pocket. <coughs> God, I need, to, I need to put a little... Ow! That cut my finger off. I need a bit of a pivot point in there <coughs> just to get this out. There you go. Um, yeah, well, I don't know what this. Yeah, well, I guess Ninja, whatever the make was, I've forgotten what the make was. Somebody would be able to tell me. So I'm just gonna. I, I have checked the. Um, I've checked the what's it already. There's a tiny twist on this neck, so I'm gonna look at it really closely because I don't want to invest um, billions of pounds and hours on this, but I do want it to play again, and I do want it to be one of those things that can live in the world and be owned by somebody else. Um, and it won't be, obviously it won't be a, <coughs> an astronomical price because I'm not going to put loads of new kit on it, but I certainly will clean it up, investigate 
under the hood and make sure it all plays. Um, now this is the again the interesting bit because we've got we've got a neck here and we've got a screw sticking out and ruining my carpet. Damn! Oh, this came with a I remember this came with a single button and um, single screw holding on a plate a pick guard no pick guard you know cover plate which was just swinging around for, for days until I took the thing off which I'll now do permanently so it doesn't ruin my lovely work mat any further and I have to cut this off because it's knackered anyhow so yeah so this is it I mean but I'll take you while we're here let's <clears throat> let's take a little jump under the under the covers and I will pour myself out a container for the parts this is just a sometimes you think that if you just get stuck straight in you'll <clears throat> remember where things are but it isn't the case uh, you always lose things so hmm what should we do first well let's have a look I don't suppose anyone's been under here since he put it together I, I just really like the time he spent and there will be a reason why he's di bisected this pit guard there'll be some logic to it which right now I'm not sure what it is, other than, you know, obviously you get quick access to all these little micro switches under here that do all the work. So the guy, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of done his research. He obviously knows what he's putting together there, and it all works, and I, I like that. Some box standard components. The soldering's pretty shabby, actually. Um, it looks like <coughs> he didn't have a very high quality soldering iron or one getting to the right temperature so you've got this dry mess of stuff here trying to earth everything to the, the pot. I mean it, it works but I would like to redo those um, and yeah everything's a bit of a kind of grisly mess but as I say it works and he's got these three different kinds of switches going on here we've got a double pole double throw and a single pole double throw single pole double throw so that's on and on, on and on, and that's on, 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 I think, or on, off, on. It could well be. We've got a little join here which I can tidy up. And a bit of shielding on the back side of these. So that's that's one part of his under the hood. And then I have no idea of the provenance of these. Uh, it's a good word, isn't it? Straight from Antiques Roadshow. The provenance of these uh, pickups because I bought this stuff in a kind of job lot of bits and to be honest there was no real information available. Um, what I know about Graham, or the little I know about Graham, it comes mainly from experiencing what he's done with guitars so um, and I, I know that even if everything else was a bit odd and sometimes aesthetically ugly. Um, I, I know for a fact that he, he knew what he was doing in terms of getting the scale length correct for the guitar. So he, he always made them play really well. So, so even here we've got little cutaways that let, let me go underneath these anchor points for the trim. Or the dis, disused trim. So we've got a great big, wow, okay. We've got a great big swimming pool <coughs> arrangement here swimming bath and he's put conductive uh, shielding paint on the back here it's very very old looking stuff we've got ceramic magnets here no names no brands anything um, and I I also inherited a pile of bits and bobs um, component parts um, which all of which you know I've sorted through some of them but a lot of them are just sitting there as a big bundle of stuff we've got some uh, interesting washered screws here. Um, I'm going to take this out because I want to get it all apart and clean everything anyway. Um, so we've got an earth wire. So it's, okay, the jack plug goes straight to the bridge. Wow. Um, and no double earths. Okay. What? Hey, what? No, wait a minute. What are we talking about? Yeah. Wow. Huh? Okay, I I cannot. Okay, yep, 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 yep. Okay, he's used the earth, uh, the ground lug of this in two different ways. He's put 
he's, he's jumped it and grounded the bridge straight to the jack plug and then he's gone back out in the normal sort of way. I'm going to cut these for now because I want to clean them up at my leisure um, and I can afford that extra bit of wire to tidy everything up. It, it, he clearly had a pretty ropey um, soldering iron. I'm not saying mine's fantastically prettier but you can sort of spot when the soldering iron is, is a sort of a bit of a club fisted approach and funnily enough I just recently um, bought a second another soldering iron let's just put this off to the one side I bought another soldering iron um, here because I originally bought a well, well this is a repeat I bought a Weller 40 watt soldering iron and uh, they're pretty good and they've got lights on them which make it really uh, effective and I had I, I it was the first soldering iron that I could live with and then it eventually wore out this this is a usable size tip and it wore it out and I just couldn't seem to get the right size replacement tips and I ended up spending a few quid just getting the wrong size tips because it's it's really difficult to I found it quite difficult to tell um, and and then I went looking thinking to myself that classic thing of right I'm going to definitely get the right tips for this so I went looking and um, the set of tips that even looked like it could possibly be the right ones for this iron of that sort of finesse or fineness um, were coming out to eight to ten quid a set and then I thought well this is only this was on sale on Prime on Amazon for 20 quid and it came with this tip and a couple of extra ones and it's brand new and it's you know so I thought well why wouldn't I just buy another one so I know great I've got two and I can um, look for tips for this one and the other one but what it means is I can get carry straight on without interruption so it's one of those things where it sort of starts being a false economy to try and buy component parts you might as well just get on and um, just get on and buy another one and they sort of make it cheap enough okay so what we've got is um, what I'd like to do is shield all this I know it's got shielding paint in it but I like the look of the <coughs> the copper and having got this apart I can also now spend some time cleaning the body up which is you know, no real cost and I can also re-anchor these um, strap buttons in fact they're a bit sharp so I'll put different ones on and while I'm doing that I can take all this apart and have a good look at the, uh, the, the frets and see whether it really needs that or whether I can eke some more life out of these things but the, some points here they seem to have been quite heavily flattened off um, especially around this area so it feels like it needs uh, if it's going to genuinely live again then I think I will refret it because the whole point is that it should live again the question for me is, is whether the uh, twist on the neck is going to be a problem <coughs> and in which case I might I might just for a, you know I might consider not saying I will but I might have a think about any other spares that I've got here and do I want to go with something else as, a, as an alternative um, I'm not saying I would but there are some kind of st oh, stylistic options here as you can see a sort of left-handed Telecaster neck on top of this beautiful so I mean it's weird enough as it is so why not go even weirder um, so it's a possible uh, this is Dylan if you're watching this is your old Tele neck left-handed um, I sprayed it Give it a good thorough lacquering the other day. Um, needs a needs a sand off, <clears throat> but um, obviously they maybe I'm going to check for the, the exact measurements and whatnot. So they may they may not be. Um, in fact, they are different. Are they different? It's hard to know. Let's put them right on the spot on top. That's interesting. Slightly different start point but they're actually working to this, the same scale the tally neck has one fewer frets on it but the uh, the nut is in a different position so the actual size of the first fret is is different that's quite well the position of the first fret is just slightly different than these two how weird um, I'm just trying to see if they are anywhere near the same I don't know what this old Mar Marlin was it a Marlin Ninja I don't know what, what it was I can't remember those guitars in a former life. Well, according to this, this is it's funny, isn't it? It's it's close enough to appear to be the same scale length, <coughs> um, with just a very fractionally different position of that nut, which is weird. 
about a two millimeters difference in the nut position on these two guitars. How weird is that? And you wonder, is that, a, is that deliberate or is it a manufacturing screw up? Because that means the first, what does it mean? It means the scale length is just slightly wrong. Um, there's probably online a dead simple way of finding the actual measurements for, between first, second, second, third, and so on and so on, which I've not gone looking for, but I could find them and see whether actually this um, this really is or isn't a, an oddity. Um, th this could probably use now one more layer of, a um, couple more layers of coats of gloss lacquer along the fingerboard here. We'll, obviously it's gone over the frets too, but we'll take that off when the time is right. So uh, this would be, um, this would need to sit slightly differently and I wonder that the pick guard is such that, um, I don't know, you never know, it might work, it might not. Um, I'm just looking at ways of avoiding the, um, putting a neck back on that has a very slight twist in it. There's a bit bit too much of a gap there for my liking. Just push that inside for a minute. Yeah, I mean, it put, actually, funnily enough, it puts the pickup back into a more more appropriate position. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a it's a twenty twenty one fret neck and that's a twenty two. Pushed off this little novel, which is glued on. Now it's classic Graham. It's blue tacked on as a cover for the <laughs> cover for the screw. Anyhow, um, I mean, the possible is that that comes forward and just tucks in. Well, you know, options, options. It's quite a nice contrast, that's for sure. Gives it a bit of a, a bit of character. Anyway, we shall we shall see. But um, you've had a quick look at the the world. Oh dear, that is pretty grim. Oh, sticky blue tack. Let me pull them off and put them away in some sort of uh, quarantine. Sorry, Graham. He was a, a heavy smoker. So basically this is just a, he's covered it up because there's basically a hole there <coughs> doing nothing, which I suppose looks a bit ugly. We could fill it with anything, something, anything. But, um, so and part of this is I, I want to make this live again, but I am obviously evaluating whether there's, whether it's going to be too much work to, to do it in such a way that it will genuinely play again. I don't want to do it and then find out that it doesn't it doesn't have a, a future life. Okay, so I'm just gonna like so I'll keep it separate. I'm gonna switch off and um, plot what I'm gonna do with this and have a think through. Okay, see you in a bit. <laughs> 